Hello, I'm Jordan Schaefer. I'm a hematologist at the University of Michigan, and today I'll be talking about venous thromboembolism prophylaxis for ambulatory medical oncology patients. So in some ways, uh, this represents a new uh, paradigm in uh, approach to uh, venous, pharmacologic venous thromboembolism prophylaxis for medical oncology uh, patients. While these patients represent a subset of patients traditionally offered risk-adapted uh, prophylaxis, including uh, hospitalized patients, uh, patients in the post-operative uh, setting, and patients uh, with uh, pregnancy or in the postpartum uh, setting, uh, ambulatory medical oncology patients traditionally haven't uh, been offered uh, pharmacologic uh, venous thromboembolism uh, prophylaxis. This is a high thrombotic risk uh, group, though. It is uh, estimated that uh, medical oncology uh, patients represent 15 to 20 percent of all patients with thrombosis, and uh, it's uh, depending on risk factors. Four to 20 percent of patients with uh, cancer will experience a venous thromboembolism uh, event, with an annual incidence of about one percent uh, per year. This uh, high thrombotic risk, though, has to be balanced against an increased risk of uh, bleeding. For example, the patients being treated with uh, chemotherapy may uh, experience thrombocytopenia uh, or uh, have other uh, bleeding risk factors. When uh, considering uh, venous thromboembolism prophylaxis for patients with cancer, there are multiple factors to consider. This includes traditional risk factors such as uh, thrombophilias, uh, obesity, and smoking, but also uh, factors related uh, to their uh, to the malignancy itself. For example, the type of uh, cancer with uh, stomach and pancreatic uh, cancers being especially high thrombotic risk, the stage of disease with uh, metastatic disease being higher thrombotic risk than uh, localized disease. Certain cancer treatments have to be considered. For example, tamoxifen and breast cancer can be associated with an increased risk of venous thrombolysis. And there can also be uh, mechanical factors uh, related to cancer, for example, compression from a uh, tumor. So uh, important to uh, considering uh, venous thromboembolism uh, prophylaxis in this uh, patient population is uh, risk, uh, uh, risk prediction and, and assessing uh, the, this thrombotic risk. The uh, Corona risk score is uh, one of the most widely uh, utilized uh, prediction, uh, prediction models with uh, five uh, readily available um, factors uh, that are available from uh, clim clinical and laboratory uh, data, including, uh, as you can see in the table here, the uh, site of the primary uh, cancer, the platelet value, the hemoglobin uh, value, uh, the leukocyte uh, count, and the body mass uh, index. And uh, this has been uh, well validated uh, with a uh, scoring system uh, to be associated with uh, thrombotic, uh, the percent of uh, patients uh, experiencing a thrombotic event with uh, breakdowns of low, intermediate, and uh, high, with the high thrombotic risk group uh, estimated to have a 6.7 to 12.9% uh, risk of symptomatic uh, venous thromboembolism. So there's been uh, data to support uh, pharmacologic uh, prophylaxis in patients with cancer for many uh, years, including uh, the data from the trials listed here. These trials studied low molecular weight heparins and did show uh, some benefit uh, to pharmacologic uh, VTE prophylaxis. However, uh, the data from these trials was not widely adapted as the number needed to treat was high, uh, over uh, 40 to 50. Also, there was an association with an increased risk of bleeding in unselected uh, uh, patients. And uh, there's also the uh, potential uh, burden of placing patients on daily uh, injection uh, uh, therapies for prophylaxis. Then uh, came uh, some uh, pivotal uh, clinical uh, trials. Uh, in 2019 was the publication of the AVERT trial. That's a randomized placebo-controlled uh, double-blind uh, clinical uh, trial uh, studying apixaban in over in 574 patients with new or recurrent uh, cancer starting chemotherapy. Patients were followed for about 180 days, 
And uh, the, uh, this, in, instead of unselected oncology patients, uh, these were patients with a corona score uh, greater than or equal to two. So intermediate to high uh, you know, thrombotic risk uh, based on that uh, risk prediction uh, score. And uh, the study showed that apixaban was associated with a reduced risk of venous thromboembolism, uh, but uh, increased risk of bleeding. For the patients on treatment, the number needed to treat was about 16 with a number needed to harm of around 100. Then also uh, was the publication of the uh, Cassini trial, which studied uh, rivaroxaban in over 1,000 uh, patients, also a double-blind uh, randomized controlled trial with uh, patients that were uh, high, uh, had solid tumors or lymphomas starting a new systemic regimen. Again, patients were followed for approximately 180 days and had uh, corona scores greater than or equal to two. And uh, this uh, study showed uh, that during the intervention period, uh, there was a reduced uh, incidence of uh, reduced risk of uh, being trouble embolism with an overall uh, low risk of uh, bleeding. It did not significantly lower the incidence of uh, venous thromboembolism or death uh, due to the, during the 180-day uh, trial period. Uh, the number needed to treat, though, to prevent a venous uh, thromboembolic event was uh, 26, with a number needed to harm of around uh, 101 uh, for the patients on treatment. So uh, based on uh, this data, uh, numerous uh, guidelines have now incorporated uh, considering uh, pharmacologic uh, venous thromboembolism prophylaxis with apixaban or rivaroxaban uh, into uh, their uh, recommendations. So this includes the National Comprehensive Cancer Network, the American Society of Clinical Oncology, the International Society of Thrombosis and Hemostasis, and the American Society of Hematology. Uh, also, uh, these uh, documents in uh, select settings allow for consideration of uh, low molecular weight uh, heparins in select patients. Uh, apixaban and uh, rivaroxaban are uh, still off label uh, for, uh, for this indication, but again, uh, it's something that's been uh, increasingly you know, utilized in, in clinical uh, practice. Overall, uh, based on uh, meta-analyses of, of these data, uh, we, we see that um, providing prophylaxis to uh, high-risk uh, patient medical oncology patients is uh, reduces the risk of venous thromboembolism, but this must be balanced about uh, by the potential to increase the risk of uh, bleeding. And uh, again, numerous uh, patient-specific factors to consider, including uh, you know patients with uh, gastrointestinal tumors or potentially genital urinary tumors uh, might have an increased risk of bleeding with the direct oral anticoagulants, and uh, some you know uh, patients have to be monitored for uh, issues such as thrombocytopenia that could be, uh, affect the decision to offer uh, prophylaxis. Patients with multiple, certain types of cancers uh, are handled differently, including multiple myeloma and myeloproliferative uh, neoplasms. Uh, so again, this is limited to uh, certain tumor types with a higher thrombotic risk and without an especial, uh, incre especially increased risk of bleeding. Um, to consider uh, prophylaxis, uh, drug interactions have to be uh, especially considered, oftentimes these patients are on multiple medications and uh, it need to do a detailed uh, search to see if, uh, you know, the direct oral anticoagulant uh, could interact with uh, any, any part of their cancer treatment or related uh, medications. And ultimately, you know, uh, because you're balancing uh, the uh, potential, you know, benefits of reducing thrombotic outcomes against the potential harm of bleeding, it's important to engage patients in shared decision making when considering uh, prophylaxis for this population. So uh, one, uh, you know, basic uh, approach uh, when uh, considering uh, ambulatory medical oncology patients uh, for prophylaxis uh, first is, uh, you know, to determine if these are, you know, patients with uh, active cancer and, and, and one of the uh, tumor types that have been uh, studied in, in clinical trials. Uh, calculating the corona score and, you know, for patients with a score under two, there's no uh, data to support uh, routine uh, prophylaxis. However, for the patients with a corona score greater than or equal to two, starting a systemic uh, cancer uh, therapy, uh, you know, these patients can be looked at further for, um, you know, considering uh, pharmacologic uh, prophylaxis. 
And so you want to look at uh, any contraindications to uh, a VTE prophylaxis, including active bleeding, again, thrombocytopenia, uh, coagulopathies, uh, spinal or neuraxial um, anesthesias or catheters, recent uh, surgeries, uh, patients with brain metastases, um, those with a history of bleeding, and again, you know, some patients with gastrointestinal cancers, among other risk factors. And for the patients without, you know, especially high bleeding risk, you know, look a little further, you know, are there any unavoidable uh, drug interactions? And if there's not, you know, the, it's reasonable to offer uh, a prophylactic dose of uh, apixaban or rivaroxaban for up to uh, six months or longer, as long as they're in that uh, higher thrombotic risk. Again, engaging the patient in, in shared decision making to talk about the, the the pros and cons of this approach. But you know, on a population uh, basis, uh, the data do support a, a, a benefit. So, uh, in conclusion, you know, patients uh, with cancer are especially high thrombotic uh, risk. But you know, again, we're balancing that competing risk of uh, bleeding. There's uh, increasing data to support risk-adapted thromboprophylaxis, often with a, a prophylactic dose of a direct oral anticoagulant. However, you have to balance uh, numerous uh, factors and care carefully consider this uh, in, in this patient population. So uh, thank you for your uh, attention.